If you watched some of my previous videos, you may have come across one where I removed the aluminum heat spreader of an AMD K62+. Plus. By moving a surface mounted resistor, you can double the level 2 cache of this CPU. There is a chance however, that this may not work. The disabled cache may be defective and was therefore disabled by AMD. The CPU essentially becomes the K63 Plus with 256KB of level 2 cache. In this video, I want to test if the unlocked cache works without issues. Since I still do not have a SuperSocket 7 motherboard, I have to test the CPU using the ASUS P55T2P4. The board does not support the typical 100MHz external bus frequency, which those CPUs were intended to work on. However, the ASUS board has a few hidden features that allow us to set the external bus to 83MHz. The video linked in the top right corner has more details regarding the undocumented external bus frequencies of the ASUS P55T2P4. Overclocking the external bus frequency has far-reaching implications. Not only do we allow the CPU to clock higher, we also overclock a lot of other components, including the motherboard cache, the main memory, IDE controllers, as well as the PCI and the ISA bus. Assuming that our external clock rate is set to 66MHz, the PCI bus on the ASUS P55T2P4 operates at half the external bus speed, which is 33MHz. The ISA clock is derived from the PCI clock. Dividing the clock rate of the PCI bus by 4 gives us the ISA bus speed of 8.3MHz. Now, there are motherboards where the bus speeds are created differently. There may even be a possibility to change the dividers in the BIOS or via jumpers. In our case however, we are stuck with the fixed dividers. If we overclock the external bus to 83MHz, we also overclock the PCI bus to 41.5MHz and the ISA clock to 10.4MHz. I could verify the ISA bus clock by using a multimeter. In the lower pin row at pin number 20, the clock frequency can be measured. You just need a multimeter that can measure the frequency and supports the frequency range. Unfortunately, my multimeter does not support much higher frequencies and therefore I was not able to perform the same test on the PCI bus. As graphics card, the ATI Mark 64 was a random pick and it worked with the higher frequencies. For sound, the Creative Sound Blaster Live did also work without issues. And finally, as a 3D accelerator, the Voodoo 2 from Diamond. All of the expansion cards I have picked are PCI cards. Before I use the modified K62+, Plus, I'm going to use a regular K62 rated at 450MHz. I overclocked the CPU in the past to 500MHz and know that it will work at that frequency. I just want to make sure that the system is stable and I am not blaming the additional cache on the modified K62 Plus in case we run into issues later on. In previous videos, I have already used the modified K62 Plus at 400MHz, that is 50MHz below its rated speed. The level 2 cache operates at the same frequency as the CPU core. So, there is a chance that the processor works fine at lower frequencies, but won't the moment we run the CPU at its rated speed or overclock it. Now it's time to find out if the modified K62 Plus is capable to work at its rated speed, or even better, if it works overclocked at 500 MHz. Congratulations, you are the 
winner. Three, two, one, go! I don't want to make this video any longer, but there is one more detail I want to share with you. While overclocking, I tried to keep the voltage as low as possible. The K62 was stable with 2 volts at 400 MHz. But I had to increase the voltage by 0.1 volts for every additional 50 MHz. The modified K62, however, was working fine with 2 volts at 450 and even at 500 MHz. If you're wondering how to get lower voltages than specified in the ASUS P55T2P4 manual, you can watch this video on my channel. It contains details regarding undocumented voltage settings for this board. Now I just have to get my hands on a SuperSocket 7 board so we can explore more options in the future. But I'm happy that the modified K62 works well and even overclocks. From now on, this will be my K63+.